What's up, everybody? This is Excellence Personified, Brian Carson, and you are listening to the most excellent podcast in the world of professional wrestling, indie wrestling, any kind of wrestling. Doesn't matter. Wrestling cheers, baby. Taking your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows. And welcome back to Wrestling Cheers right here on the brand new TrendingTopicsNetwork.com. Wrestling Cheers where everybody knows your name, even if you have a million different versions of your name, whether you're Psycho or Justice or Vicious or Fluffy or whatever it is, we still know your name. And this is Wrestling Cheers where we like to talk about shows in the Northeast Ohio area, shows that we're going to see, shows we have seen, and all the other types of Shows that we can do, interviews, bullshit sessions, and whatnot. But this is a preview episode for this Friday show in Cleveland, Ohio by AIW, Rulers of the World. We get into more into that very, very shortly. But a little bit of contact information or things that you need to know coming into the podcast. Please rate and review and subscribe to us. Thank you for listening. If you want to listen to more and subscribe to more, rate us. Let us know how much you liked it on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, and Podbean and contact info if you want to get a hold of us we're on facebook twitter and instagram facebook.com slash wrestling cheers twitter.com slash wrestling cheers and instagram.com slash wrestling cheers and email wrestling cheers at gmail.com all that is also in the show notes if you need that information one more time without any further ado i am your host i am heavy set and this week i'm joined by two men who are returning to the show and have never been on the show at the same time so we're going to first start off with a, a veteran of the show. We have Dustin Alberti. Yeah, I'm the vet. And how could you not forget about the awesome run of Fluffy Sid? It was, a, uh, it was quite the run I, back, in, I wanted to back throw, in the day. I just wanted to throw out other names besides, you know, Justice and everything. I was just like, uh, Fluffy. I don't know. Fluffy. Even fluffy if you're, Sid, even if you're Fluffy, a, we still know you. I don't know. a run that Fluffy Sid had. Cunt Boy Sid. I heard it was Cunt Boy Sid. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go that route, <laughs> but fine. Dustin says, I don't care. Fuck it. Uh, and we're being joined by none other than Ed number one, Ed Battis. Yo, yo, yo. This is the, how, how did you put it, Ed, with you two together? This is the. I don't, I don't remember. You, what? You said this like forever ago, like when we talked about um, getting you back on the podcast. It's like, oh, when are you going to have me and Dustin back on? That's the, what the best, you said the best thing since. Sliced bread? I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe? I thought you made a comparison to Heenan and Monsoon or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like putting Heenan with Monsoon. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. You, Which is that was funny like months because ago. I totally forgot. I'm, the, I'm funny like Heenan and smart like Monsoon. I don't really know where Ed comes oh, in on this. Fuck off. Maybe, maybe a little pretentious, but I don't know. Yes. Maybe it's like yes. putting Monsoon and Heenan with Vince. Yeah, exactly. He's pretentious and thinks that he's that he's no, adding no. something more, to the more like uh, Jesse on on the body. I, I'm waiting. No. I'm waiting for the well, first what on. a maneuver of of the night. So yeah, but yep. we have this Friday. We have Rulers of the World featuring Psycho Sid Vicious Friday, December 29th, 7:30 bell time at Our Lady of Mount Carmel, 1355 West 70th Street, Cleveland, Ohio. Tickets. Available, well, they might not be available by the time you listen, shop.aiwrestling.com. Uh, the matches that we have are Joey Janela versus Jimmy Jacobs for the Intense title. Fatal 4-Way, Matt Cross versus Gringo Loco versus Candice LeRae versus Laredo Kid. The Production versus No Consequences. Eddie Kingston versus Hot Sauce Tracy Williams. All Ego Ethan Page versus Dominic Greeny. Filthy Tom Lawler versus Lewis Linden. An open challenge for the AIW tag titles. So in two infinity and beyond versus uh, question marks. And then we have a rematch for the AIW absolute title. Nick Gage versus Ed's favorite wrestler in the world next to Brian Carson, Tim Donst. So 
let's let's start off with the open challenge match. To Infinity and Beyond have been tag champions forever now. And like it was actually, before I forget, let's go into what they had to say about this open challenge. And we'll come back right after that. You see these? You see these? We told you. We beat the flippy dudes, we beat the funny men, and we beat the fighters. Anybody you try to put against us for these belts have gone down. And nothing's oh. changing. Yeah, you know, we have beat all these guys. We beat everyone you put in front of us. I, I even, uh, you know what? Whoever you got. All right, AIW? How about that? Whoever. Open challenge, December 29th for these titles. How's that sound? Bring it on. So they've said it. They've, you know, they've beat everybody and they're still champions. So screw it. They're going to have an open challenge for the titles. Ed, Dustin, who do you guys think will be that mystery opponent? We, we heard last week well, some of mine and Caden's ideas. Now we have two new fresh takes on it. What do you guys got? We'll start off with Dustin. I have a few ideas. I have the ideas of either the Batiri making a return, which I'm not sure because I haven't really seen anything from the Batiri in a while. I feel like that'd be a good, like, came out of nowhere. I also like the idea that you and Caden came up with of Cloudy and Jimmy, but that'd be bringing somebody out of retirement and bringing somebody back who has been back in a while. And I don't know how likely that is. I would enjoy uh, the Carnies to come back or Massage Envy. I really like Massage Envy. I'd like to see them come back. I forgot all about um, Massage Envy. And my Dark Horse pick is I would love to see the return of Hope and Change, but that's my Dark Horse pick. Uh, I... I know Veda is going to Japan soon, and I know maybe that throws a wrench in the plans. She can know. still be in the match. I mean, just because this is an open challenge, it doesn't necessarily mean that To Finney and Beyond it will lose the titles. That's true. They haven't really lost them yet, huh? Oh, and they've lost them twice before, three times before. No, nope, twice. It's before. been a while. Yeah, it's been a while since. They've lost I'm actually, them. I'm actually on the the tag title history page right now, so I'm trying to just look. I was just bored and looking up stuff while you guys were talking. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think we'll see. I don't think it would be crazy pain. I think they're they're done ski. Well, also, it would be cool. There's a lot. Wait, of, is there's a lot is of Shima on? Is Shima on the show? Is DJ Z on the show? No. Okay. Maybe I would put DJ Z and Gringo together. They're on most of the big shows, most of the Mount Carmel shows. I would figure who's going to be in this match won't necessarily be in a match prior. That's so, what I'm saying. So they're not on. They're not on in the, the any matches prior. Or is Gringo in that? Yeah, Gringo. That four Gringo's way? In, yeah, is in the four way. Gringo, okay. Laredo, Laray, and Cross. That's right. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of tag teams I could think of, but their tag team partners are at least one tag team partners in a match. Like I got, I got one for you. So I got a tag team. I'm gonna call them high and low, and uh, Sid's gonna be at the show. So we put Sid with Swoggle. Call that high low. Wow. Yep. I mean, Horn Swoggle will be in the area uh, the night before. Uh, as we're recording this, it'll be tomorrow night. He's gonna be in the area. So. I do like the idea of the Batiri. I always like them. Um, buckets are always around. Well, that's a possibility. Now, what would be amazing is if we get a tag team that was supposed to come in like years ago, and they finally come in, and that is the Murder City Machine Guns. Huh? I was I was actually going to bring them up too because they are both uh, kind of back doing their thing. I think Saban was injured, wasn't he? And he's just kind of getting back into things. Uh, they've been, they were ROH tag champs for a while. I mean, they've been tagging in ROH for, the, since the summer, I think. I thought Saban was hurt for some reason. I thought he hurt his bicep or something like that. Nope. Maybe that, yeah. the, maybe the guy that, that one dude that actually goes by the name Saban, just that, over in Japan. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. No, because they were on, uh, they were tagging up when I, well, uh, Summers, did, didn't you see them in Columbus? I was not at Columbus. That was the same day of the DBI, and I was covering that instead. Okay, so you didn't go to the sh- you didn't go to any of the ROH shows. No, the I last time around, really okay. wanted to, especially well, with with no Omega shit. and uh, Suzuki. Yeah, uh, they yeah they were tagging there, and they were I think they were champs there. If not, they might be champs now. But they definitely held the titles more recently in ROH, so they are together again. 
and it's not a and it's a, that short drive that they could actually make with Jimmy pretty much. Mm-hmm. So, yo, what if, any 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 others? Any other any guesses from you, Summers? What about what about a return of a tag team? I mean, great. I know we're not going to see this due to one, one person's uh, curtain contract status, but hey, let's throw it out there. Crimson and BJ Whitmer. I thought or BJ the was retired. You yeah, always that's... bring the forgotten too. Maybe... I, I I forgot them immediately when they debuted. <laughs> maybe maybe Jimmy doesn't win the intense title in a match and then decides to go for more gold and brings BJ Whitmer and they win the tag titles. But like I said, isn't BJ like actually retired? I mean, when was his last match? It was well. I think he is retired, but. Still, either way. Or, I mean... Well, you can go Jimmy uh, and, and that redhead. That redhead? What redhead? Yeah. Crimson. Oh, Crimson. Gotcha. Yeah, he's the other member of the Forgotten. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking to see a on-cage match if, if one BJ's last... Actually, yeah, BJ's last match as of cage match was when Dom beat him in, at Gauntlet. What if it were... And before that, when he lost to Tolar... <laughs> What if it was the return of not necessarily a former tag team champions, but a former champion, two former champions technically? What about Gregory Iron and Alex Daniels? Well, Gregory Iron and Alex Daniels had their blow up, and that's the last time we saw either of them. Alex Daniels knocked Greg silly and disappeared. Hey. So I don't know if that would I don't know if that would necessarily happen, but I mean, hey. crazier things have happened. Time heals all wounds, unless you're Ed and you hate everybody. Yep. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. Maybe maybe dedication personified. Speaking of people that I love, could be dedication personified. I don't mind. I I like half of the team. What's your problem with Doctor Dan? Absolutely nothing, <laughs> except for a drinking problem. And we all should be straight edge, right? Everybody yeah. Should so be. I'm like, drinking a bring, beer. Bring back prohibition. I'm drinking a flying dog bloodline blood orange ale. It's actually quite nice. Oh, you you cool. think Josh Prohibition cool should be in this match? Too. Yeah, yeah, that's that, euthanasia. Yes. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. Maybe nah, Josh is a net breaker, not him. Maybe maybe euthanasia will be there. Maybe maybe M Dog pulls double duty, and we get M Dog and Josh versus to Infinity Beyond, and we get euthanasia to come back. <laughs> I, I want a, a good bu- time. I want a Buffalo invasion. I want the butcher and the blade. That's what I want. AKA uh, Braxton Sutter, Pepper Parks, and, and Andy uh, Williams. And Andy Williams from Every Time I Die. Yeah. The butcher and the blade. That'd be great. Bring them in. Do it up. I like. They can see- come down with Cheech. I like to see Sutter in AIW. I, yeah. I only got to see him once before he officially uh, did Impact, but like he was already signed um, and loved him. Didn't ring, and it's like such a nice guy. Oh, they're yeah, they're both the best. So, but yeah, yeah that's that's what I, I I throw that one into the into the ring. Any more? It's not a bad choice. Any more on be, that? that that'd match be fun from you guys. What's that? Any more on that match from you guys? Oh, uh, I don't think I have any other ideas. I swear, I had a ton of ideas last week. Listening to you and Caden talk about it. Now I just can't remember anything. I know I said a few of the ones I was thinking. I mean, there's always guys like the Irish Airborne who we haven't seen in a long time, or you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of tag teams that have gone to the wayside that could always just show if, up at any time. If Lewis Linden wasn't announced in this match, I'd say Aeroform. Yeah, Aeroform. I mean, really, anything can happen. It's like, crazy. I can submission squad could come back. Uh, <laughs> the next bombs should be there. That's I mean, actually that's so actually the best teams in the world. That was actually something I talked about off air with Caden. Is besties in the world? It's besties in the world. For those who don't know or know anything about AIW history, there was a tag team in AIW called Sex Bombs. It's David Vega and Matt Fitchett. Since leaving AIW, or not necessarily leaving AIW, for, uh, Fitchett got injured twice. After his last one, he really wasn't going to be seemed like he wasn't going to be booked by AIW for a while. Davy Vega goes into singles run, becomes intense champion, loses the title, and shortly after that kind of just disappears. We haven't seen either of them in a long time. And since then, they, they, they've kind of built their own buzz of being uh, besties in the world tag team. That is actually a per- tag team I would love to see technically back in AIW. And if this and would be they, it, that would Aren't awesome. they heels in, in like AAW? I mean, it's 
people are... I think I think it's like a half and half thing. I don't know. From what I can tell, it's like Davy Vega's really pushing for him to be friends and it's kind of like he's being annoying about it and Fitch it's like all right, all right dude, whatever. Let's like just keep doing our thing and I don't know. I it seems like a real like the crowd really likes one and kind of like this other guy's annoying type thing. I don't know. Yeah, because I remember Marty and Sarah, I think they were seeing some of the chants that like Davey was getting and stuff. And like, like, like really hardcore stuff that we would say back in the Turner days kind of stuff. So. Um, like I know with them, I think they, they also wrestle in different promotions. So AAW, they might be like that. I don't know if, they, I don't think they're besties in the world in. Uh, was it NWL? But I know that they wrestle right. there, and I've seen them in other promotions advertised. Like I think they they had a match versus Alexander and Page in Calgary. So so they they go other places. I and think it, it would be great to just see them back. Yeah, I think it'd be nice. You know, that's me personally. I, I think that the place would go crazy if that were to happen. I just don't want to see Infinity Beyond anymore. They're just boring the hell out of me. I mean, they have pretty much this whole run, but... I mean, Callan Delaney is the WWE superstar again. He was on TV Which recently. Like twice. You know, twice, yeah. Twice. He's a member of 205 Live now. Yeah, I didn't see that because I don't watch 205 Live. Um, Nobody watches 205 Live. Right. All right, let's... I can't believe this reign for To Infinity and Beyond is at 279 days. That's insane. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, they beat Crazy Pain, right? Yep, and Crazy Pain was at 139. Did they beat them? Cage match rules. Wow, what what event did they beat him at? Was it Gauntlet? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And to Infinity and Beyond is the only three-time tag team champions. There's a few tube timers in there, but... Wow. Let's, yeah. Okay. Yep. So I said my piece. Yeah, we'll we'll move on from there, and we'll talk about a match that maybe have has done to, been talked about to death in in only a matter of a couple of weeks. But the production versus no consequences. So this is another one of those those moments where you heard what I've had to say about it. You've heard what Caden said about it. Now we have two fresh takes, and so we have these guys going up against each other. What do you? Oh, what are your thoughts on this, Dustin? Well, we're going piece by piece. Uh, I, not that I dislike No Consequences, but I feel like No Consequences haven't really, they haven't really done anything to make me care, if that makes sense. They're just dudes who do really cool moves. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I mean, that's cool, but I mean, I mean, Josh Bishop is probably showing the most character out of everybody, I think, but I feel like it's. His character is just based on his family really liking him, if that makes sense to anybody else. But <laughs> I feel like I feel like uh, they they all have a lot of talent. And I think that in a few years after they've kind of figured out where they belong and they've kind of full on had like a character build and had some storylines and they get comfortable. Not even a few years, probably by the end of this year, like 2018, I feel like they'll they'll all kind of have found their places and they'll be really good talents that people will know really well. But until then, I think that I haven't really been given a reason to care about them. Uh, production, on the other hand, uh, in the short amount of time that they have been a team, as far as member by member showing up, uh, they've done great character building, probably partly, partially because of guys like Frankie Flynn and Magnum CK having actual acting backgrounds. And uh, I mean, Derek has been around for a while building whatever character he decides to be that day and he's been doing a great job at it and then kobe red uh i can't say that he necessarily has i mean i get what his character is but i feel like it could be a little more uh molded if that makes sense it is evolving because you you weren't at the last show dustin this is the first no, time we, where we have seen colby and he didn't have any type of face paint on he wore a mask instead and that was, I, I thought, one step in the right direction. Like, the face paint's fine, but I feel like... Did he wear a mask the whole time, or was it just, like... He wore, he out? pretty much wore, like, a Phantom of the Opera-type mask. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I gotcha. like, because it's the best... It was it was one of those uh, small things that helped... Broadway thing ever. Yeah, it's, it's one of his, those small things that helps fit into what the production is. And he yeah. also wore uh, 
like kind of like the that jacket that the one dude from um oh god we just talked talk about the circus tag team the carnies yeah carnies. yeah the one the the yeah. the skinny dudes from the carnies kind of like that like uh, jacket like a a ringmaster jacket. ringmaster's jacket that made yeah sense. It, it it looked really cool and it was different than what what most people would wear to the ring so i liked it um yeah well, Do you have anything I, else to say on that well I think I I may be in the I, I know for a fact that I'm in the uh, minority when I say this, and I don't. And it's not that I don't like them. I just find something I I don't look at them as promos. But I feel like Magnum CK's promos aren't necessarily. I don't know. There's just like like the like three minute one that he did for the sh- the Menor show was kind of like all right. I get it. I get it. I get what the character is. I get the set. I just, there's something about it was just kind of like he's acting. I feel like it was almost care being, which I guess is the point. He's like a character acting, but it just seemed very dramatic. Forced. I, I t- yeah, dramatic. Dramatic's a good word for it. It seemed very dramatic, which I guess is the point. There's just something about it I didn't like. And, but I did like, like the promo we cut. When the four of them were standing outside of uh, on Gordon Square, when they did the all four of them together promo, and I thought that the him eating peanut butter promo, where he wasn't really talking, was clever too. Mm-hmm. I just I feel like a three and a half minute promo, three and a half minute monologue, which is what it was, wasn't necessarily a promo. And I feel like things like that. I don't know. I wasn't a fan of it, and I know a lot of people were fans of it, and I know I'm in the minority there. And I'm not saying that it was bad. I'm just saying. I didn't think that it was necessary. I, think, I thought it was cool. Uh, go ahead, Justin. I was going to say, like, I, I feel like what Magnum CK has done since being in AIW, like those those little promos, they, they pull you in. At least they pull me in. It's not just someone cutting a promo, like, oh, I'm going, I got this match coming up, blah blah blah. I feel like he does it his own way, and it's wakes it makes him more of an individual and like i said it it the purpose is to suck you in and i feel like he's a very charismatic guy and it works so well with him and there's not a lot of people around that could do it the way that he's doing and granted maybe it's because he does have an acting background and he's promoting a show and as an as an actor who is an actor wrestler or whatever you want to call it it's just it fits, and I think maybe that's also what brings me in. Well, it's, I think I think part of it is more that the length of it. I think three and a half minutes was a long time to listen to somebody give a monologue in in the style of a theater monologue, not in like a wrestling promo. Which, like I said, it's different, and I don't mind it. I just feel I, I think maybe that it was just too long, and it was wordy, and I think I don't know. I you, you there know was just something about it where I was I, I didn't. I disconnected from it after a minute. It just seemed, it seemed long to me. I'll I'll use this to defend Magnum CK. I mean, granted, like I'm I'm kind of scrolling through the AIW's YouTube channel, looking for where promos are, and most of them are about a minute, minute and a half. So three and a half minutes would be on the longer side. But there's one man in AIW history who has constantly cut many long promos, and they've all been really good. That's Josh Prohibition. Some of my favorite promos are Josh Prohibition promos, and they're long. That is who I'm comparing Magnum CK to. He can cut. They cut different promos because the thing that I always liked about some of the better Josh Pro- Prohibition promos is they start. Some of them start off very soft, and then he, as the promo escalates, he builds the intensity to maybe towards the end is where he's all pissed off. Not necessarily what Magnum CK is doing, but it's what's. Pro, J Pro used, I felt like that brought you in. Same thing with this. It's just they're different aspect ways to do a promo. And if like if, if one of your biggest concerns was three and a half minutes, like I said, there's plenty of three and a half minute plus Josh Prohibition promos. When you started to talk about long promos and guys who cut long promos, I thought you were going to bring up Tracy Smothers. And I was going to say that's completely different. <laughs> yeah, that's completely Tracy different. Tracy Smothers can cut a, cut a three and a half hour long promo and I will sit there and listen to it. I don't think Tracy but, Smothers has ever cut a three and a half minute promo before a show. It's always uh, at a show during a match, which is fine. I, I, but I, I get what you're saying with Josh. I think the difference between Josh and Magnum is Josh is cutting a wrestling promo and he does it through story and he tells a story throughout it. I think that Magnum CK is that one in particular was dramatics for the sake of dramatics. 
Like it was, I get that it's the character. I get that it's the, he's the supporting lead, right? Or the supporting, like he's, he is an actor. He is doing a monologue. It's not even a promo, it is a monologue. And I think that that's the difference. Like, I don't think that there was really a story to be told. I mean, I might have to go back and listen to it and maybe, I mean, I will admit I've only listened to it like once and then I tried to listen to it again. But for me to sit down and listen to something for three and a half minutes is mind numbing at times because I have a short attention span because I am an idiot. But, like I said, I'd have to go back and listen to it. I just, like I said, I enjoyed the promo he cut when they were all outside together. I just feel like a three and a half long, three and a half minute long promo should say more. Almost like I said, like a Josh Prohibition telling a story where whenever he does a promo that that long, he maybe will tell like a little anecdote and then that anecdote turns into a parallel of whatever story he's telling. Well, I'm going to cut this eight minute uh, <laughs> segment short because that's how long Dustin's been fucking rambling. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I've been sitting here muted most of the time. But anyways, uh, I... I okay. Now I'm gonna dissect the match on my side. Um, you hate them no all. They all suck. Yeah. No con. No. No consequences. Uh, it's whatever. Um, I do. I also do. Like, I agree. It is. It is whatever. That is what I was trying to say. Yeah. Is it, it is, just kind of whatever. Um, I don't. And it's also kind of weird because I mean we are in this these days of. On the indies, at least, there being no faces and heels for the most part. And this is, to me, this technically would be a heel versus heel match, which is kind of weird. Um, even though there is, everybody does get their 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 face spots in, be it the comedy of, um, of the production or the high spots of No Consequences. Uh, I also think that uh bishop is kind of the main guy in my idea in my head as to somebody that is sticking out um when i was to- i was uh and then to go off another tangent a um a wrestling cheers um common thread <laughs> uh i was told by dom that he was during the first student show the last week back to the future cup he was like so who are you gonna hate this time? And, and he's and I'm like I, I don't know I can't tell yet. And he's like oh you're gonna hate uh, Trey Lamar and God damn is that kid a cocky fuck? <laughs> and uh and but but he's using it in his matches now and he used it with the uh, the sneak pin in the one in um in the last uh. Mount Carmel show, right? Hell on Wasn't Earth. It, yeah, Hell on Earth. He used the sneak pin and everything. I'm like, oh, that's perfect. Like that, that was just perfect, perfectly timed. Good heat. Good, good uh, booking there uh, for once. <clears throat> um, and uh, so, yeah, he comes across as the cocky one. Uh, I don't. I still kind of don't see them as a as a faction. Only thing that they they just have the faction beatdowns every once and again at uh, out at uh, Music Links. Um, now on the other, on the flip side, the production is besides like filthy time coming in this year. I think the production is my favorite thing in the IW this year. That's been a constant. Uh, I think that they're awesome. All the stuff that they're doing, uh, like Dustin said, with adding the little, uh, somebody new to it every time. I think that everybody has, has brought something solid to the table, be it, uh, Derek, uh, direction becoming Derek director. And he's embraced his, his, the, the, his new persona, uh, very much. So, uh, Frankie Flynn is, is fantastic as, ha <laughs> as usual. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Colby Wright. I liked him since he debuted on it, but just mainly because of his musical taste. Um, cause he comes out to code. He used to come out to code orange, my dudes. And, um, but I also liked his wrestling style because it's not something that we would see uh, normally in AIW from somebody that's that's local, as you would say, even though he's from Erie. Um, Magnum CK, once I the first time I saw him debut, uh, and I still hate it. The only thing I hate about him is his fucking shitty Van Halen tights. I just didn't see that they match the production at all. That's about that's the only thing I have against him. 
uh, the best thing he ever did that he's done yet was when he was coming out at Hell on Earth and he had his arms uh, wide open because he, I, I guess he's a fan of Creed. Um, he <laughs> well, wow, he a just uh, started. Yeah, he just started bad. Uh, people people didn't move out of the way of his hand, and he would just swipe them because he just kept his arms uh, completely open and with his Macho Man esque Macho Man nineteen eighty six uh, uh, sequence robe, and it was just hilarious. And we were just cracking up in the stands. It was so great. Uh, and then I think uh, I'll cut down the eight minute promo on the promo. Uh, <laughs> I love the peanut butter thing. It was simplistic and it was hilarious. Uh, the only thing that I had against the the promo out in the snow, the three minute promo, was I didn't like all the cuts. I think it could have just been a one camera cut. And but what he had to say was perfectly fine. Uh, the difference between him and and Prohibition's promos is that there was that intensity, and they're completely two different promo styles to me. Like there was intensity in the build up, like you were saying, but. He's putting on a monologue as opposed to Josh is putting on like usually a revenge uh, story in his. Yeah. Uh, I hope production goes over. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's all I got on on that one. Oh, and then uh, Dustin, did you know that uh, Chase Oliver joined back with no consequences at the last show? Yes, I heard uh, from uh, wrestling from the podcast last week. Yeah, that's what I figured. I was just asking, just covering bases. It was it was a good thing. I uh, I captured it pretty well with my photographs. So <laughs> I captured yep. it pretty well in my tweets. Uh huh. Cool. I uh, <laughs> did nothing to cover it. Yep. Shitty fan. <laughs> I think one question I am. that I have from all this is is something that I did mention last week with Caden. Where where's PB Smooth? Where's Malcolm Monroe the Third? Are 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 they done? Is it you know the production and no consequences just rolled over them and that's it? Or will those two get some sort of revenge? Or or possibility could we see within the next you know so many months the production and no consequences making enemies? And then you have people with common ground, like, like I said, like PB Smooth and Malcolm Under the Third. Hmm. I don't know. I could see uh, M3 joining forces with, go, uh, rejoining forces or just, or switching sides and becoming a member of the production or something. Well, I see what you're saying with the MM3 and PB Smooth. I mean,. They just need to find two more people, and we got squads of four going at it. I mean, it could be like gang rules. You guys know? Well, well, they, well, well we, we know move. PB already has two people, though. Who does PB have? The Weird World, brah. Oh, yeah, he's got the Weird World. I mean, we could see it. That's possible. Weird World has issues with both teams. We could have we could have Weird World and PB Smooth and MM3 versus the production versus no consequences. That's not a bad that's not a bad little little match there if I do say so myself. I'm down. That's It'd a, be a clusterfuck as as all hell, but I'm down. That's a, that's an absolution match. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's follow uh NXT's thing and make it a war games match with three teams. Yep, exactly. WCW did it actually as well. Uh the last war games was a three team match. Yes it was. And I did not watch it because it was dead WCW, and I cried. I don't know. I was never really a huge fan of WCW. Because you don't like wrestling. As in, right, 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 wrestling, wrestling, technical. That's why I liked it. What? And I mute myself. I know. For the most part, I always found WCW kind of boring. Especially during the... My biggest thing was definitely during the three-hour Nitros. And I actually think it was mostly because of the commentary I thought was horrible. Yeah, I can see that. I don't remember how... Eh, I had to watch a lot of three-hour Nitros. I think I stopped kind of watching Nitro in like 98, 99 maybe. Yeah, kind of Russo era stopped. I would watch the first hour of Nitro then just watch Raw. Yeah. I would do the switching back and forth during commercial breaks. I should say my dad would because we'd watch it together and he'd have to control the remote. Cool. Uh, so, uh, let's get into the main event. Nick Gage versus Tim Donst, a rematch for the absolute title. At Hell on Earth, Nick Gage became the new absolute champion in a death match. It, well, let's go into what Nick Gage and Tim Donst have to say because Tim Donst pretty much says everything that I need to say. It's the fucking God. It's Nick Gage. Oh, by the way, it's the new AIW Absolute World Champion. 
I told you when I came in this company in 2015, I'm gonna make a stake in this company. I'm gonna take over this company. And I'm gonna make this my second home. What I say and what I do is always a fucking promise and I back that shit up. So now AIW, you better get used to the fucking program. You better get used to Nick fucking Gage. Cause I'm a violent man. My track record speaks for it. And now I'm your fucking champ. You can't call me up on the phone and say I can't use you no more. Cause I got your fucking title. And the next person who faces me, I am bringing weapons. I am bringing violence and I am proud to be a deathmatch wrestler. Oh, by the way, I'm gang affiliated. And all you fucking assholes don't know what that means. That means I come to the building with a fucking weapon on me. So my next victim, I don't give a fuck who it is. Because it seems like in 2017, it's call out Nick Gage fucking year. And every fucking person who keeps calling me out, I fucking answer the challenge. And I keep beating them down. And Tim Dunst, you're the last victim to call me out. You stupid motherfucker. You should never put that title on the line. Now look what your dumb ass did. You lost it. You look past me, Tim Dunst. You were overconfident. You thought I didn't have the skills to go in that fucking ring. So you put your title up. And now you're walking home in your front fucking door and going home to your family or your wife or your kid with your head held down with a disgust look on your face while I go home to my fucking gang proud and they give me fucking hugs while I have a fucking gold strap around my fucking shoulder it's the fucking God Nick fucking Gage murder death kill gang Eastern Bloc gang fucking affiliated ever since Tim Dons came back to professional wrestling he's been a different man I've been hurting, and for some reason emotionally, it made me feel better to hurt myself physically. That's why I did all that light tube, that's why I did all those staples, barbed wire, and those dreaded thumbtacks that all you fans bring, all you fans that buy my t-shirts, right, and want me to sign autographs for, the same fans bringing these contraptions to see me bleed. Well, not anymore. Because once I lost that title to Nick Gage, I lost a part of myself. But that's okay, because I found myself in the same vein. Because I realized that Tim Dons isn't some deathmatch wrestler. Tim Dons isn't some nobody. Tim Dons isn't some ex-convict. Tim Donst is a mat wrestling machine. He's the guy that was trained by two of the very best wrestlers on the entire planet. Chris Hero and Mike Quackenbush. He's the guy that was under the tutelage of Sarah Del Rey, Claudio Castagnoli, and Jorge Scott Rivera. Nick Gage, I tried to stoop down to your level and I lost. Looks like I'm not as much of a scumbag as I thought I was. But December 29th, I'm going to do something that you can't do. Wrestle. Because Tim Donst is professional wrestling, and Tim Donst will be your next AIW champion. Catchphrase. So, Tim Donst lost the title, now thinks he can out-wrestle Nick Gage. Like, I see where he's coming from, but at the same time, doesn't mean Nick Gage can't, just because he can't use weapons, doesn't mean he can't fight. I, yeah, I still think Nick Gage has a fighting chance in this match. What about you guys? Start with Dustin. Well, I mean, he obviously still has a chance, and he is the champion, so, I mean, if it is a wrestling match, he has the champion's advantage, where if it's a disqualification, or if there's a count out, he can retain the title. If it is just going to be a wrestling match, uh, Tim Dons is known as the better technical wrestler. Nick Age isn't necessarily known as a technical wrestler. Uh, I mean, that's really all there is to say based on the two promos. I mean, if in the in Nick Age's promo, he makes it sound like Don, he already has put Donst in the past, and Donst hasn't necessarily. Maybe that's 
a detriment to Nick Gage. Maybe he shouldn't just be putting Dost in the past, and maybe he should worry about the fact that he's going to get a rematch so quickly. Ed, talk about your favorite wrestlers in the world. Oh, yeah. Uh, I also think that it's, yeah, when Don, I only saw the Don's uh, promo, but I what I take out of it is, okay, so he's not talking about any hardcore stuff. Poor Caden. Uh, but yeah, they're still fighting. I've never really seen Nick try to technically wrestle, so I don't know about that. Um, I think that even though people say he's a wrestler, Donst really isn't that much of a technician. He can do a few little things here and there, but nah. So have you have you watched Don's whole career though? Like, did you see some of his early stuff in Chikara? Like when he was the Matt Wrestling Machine, he was the Young Lions Cup champion. I've seen what he was doing in AIW back in Turner's, and that's it. Did you? All right, so there is a match that I saw live. It was the first time I ever saw Tim Don's live. Let me guess. Uh, the Russell National Pro Wrestling Day. No, oh. the first time I saw Tim Don's live was him versus a little man named Brian Danielson at the West Park Party Center for a Chikara show before Absolution 5. That's that's what I and thought Tim you were And Tim Don's wrestled. So I can tell you that Tim Don is a hell of a technical wrestler. I'd hope he fucking wrestle against Danielson. I mean, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just... I don't know. I don't think. Uh, now, would you say that Dance is more of a technical wrestler or a better technical wrestler than somebody even like Hot Sauce? Um, same, same type school? of technical wrestling. Um, yeah, same school. I mean, I'm sure they can do a lot of the same things. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure about. I know Dance uh, wrestled in high school. He was a he was an amateur wrestler. I'm not sure. I'm sure Tracy Williams probably did too. So I don't know. I don't like. I I'm not 100 percent sure of. Tracy Williams' background. I'm sure Shit. it Shit. seems I like he... in, I wrestled in elementary school, but I'm not saying I'm an amateur wrestler. <laughs> well, no. no. That means <laughs> it depends on the level as to which you did it. I mean, I, I mean, I can look. I, I mean, I'm looking at a trophy and a medal right now that I won in wrestling. I can. I, I would say that I was an amateur wrestler in grade school and high school. I mean, I won matches. I lost matches. I wasn't like the greatest. Right. But I know that last time I was on a mat, I was able to wrestle. I mean, it's one of those things where I mean, it. it, it I don't like. I said I don't know Tracy Williams' background. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a different type of. Like I said, the other thing too is it's a different type of technical wrestling. I mean, Tracy Williams does a lot more of the MMA submission style technical wrestling, not the like. I would. Uh, I would say more European style. British yeah. Style. Yeah. As compared to like an actual like. American, like it, it's not like a Mr. Perfect technical wrestler. It's like a like a Johnny Saint, right, right, professional wrestler, technical wrestler. I mean, I think there's two. Like you said, it's a a British style, and there's the American style of technical wrestling. It's a different type of technical. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I really don't care about the about the the absolute title. I really haven't cared for quite a while. I I they get me they get me a, a pop. They get a pop out of me when they change the title when I think a guy deserves it and it's literally the you deserve it shit. And that's, that's basically what it is like, Oh cool. That guy won. And then I'm like, Nope. Okay. What? Yeah. What's going on here. And so, uh, but I'm what, old. What was the last champion you cared about? Uh, let me go back to the title history. Uh, prohibition about one winning. Yeah. Probably Probo. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Ricky. Yeah, I cared about that one too. Uh, Ultra Mantis. I wasn't even there for that actually. That was a good. That was a good change. I like that change. That was a good change. Uh, Josh Alexander, Ricky, Pro Prohibition. Those are the ones that I've cared about. Otherwise, before that, it, no, nobody. I, I haven't cared about anybody otherwise since I've been back in, uh, back in like when Conspiracy Theory was. So yeah, I'm just very ap- ap- apathetic. Uh, yeah, I'm looking right here. Let's see. While he's looking, for those wondering, I'm now drinking a Flying Dog Numero Uno Agave Cerveza. It's a lager brewed with agave nectar with a lime zest added. I'm drinking Rev Coffee, which is super caffeinated coffee from my Keurig, because I'm a boss. Uh, one, uh, Let's see, about 18 ounces of that with some milk. 
some Hershey syrup, a little bit of a cherry shot of like coffee shot in it. And let's see, some vanilla creamer uh, and honey. I'm drinking orange cream flavored sparkling water. It has zero calories, uh, zero sugars, zero caffeine, zero sodium. And it's uh, pretty good. But going with the title stuff, uh, I think I only give a shit if like one of two people wins either of the title, either of the singles titles, and that's Dom or Filthy. That's when you'll see me pop huge. So there's that. And then tag team. I mean, there could, there's a few people that are in the running for that type of nomination. So yeah, um, I'd assume Gage goes over. We'll go, we'll go over picks later, but okay. Uh, else? I, I mean, I think nice. that's that's pretty much it when it comes to these two. I mean, been over the history, you know, going into Hell on Earth, and now we have it to where Nick Gage wins and Don's gets a rematch. Fine, it's a different playing field, and we'll see how how that goes. I'm hoping more than anything that Gage wins, but obviously we'll we'll get into that part later. I hope I hope Gage wins, and then so and I I like that it was the immediate rematch. So then it's not the comeback later or even Don's coming in and doing the interfering shit, which he has done before. Yeah. And over and over again. And it's just like the show ends the same way all the time. Even even the set, you could even say the same for for Gage doing the same later on, which is weird because you would think, oh, Gage would want to screw him out of the title. That was one thing I was kind of wondered. Oh, one last thing I'd like to add, too. I would really like this to be their last match, win or lose for Dons. Yep. I'd like to kind of see them both do something different. Uh, Dons has been in the title picture for a while. And, I mean, this Gage thing is from, like, two years ago still. And we haven't really seen Gage do anything but wrestle Dons. So I'd kind of like to see things get kind of changed up and shaken up a little bit. I think that, not that I wouldn't want to, like I said, I like Don, so I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily not want to see him working, but maybe if we didn't see him for a couple months, I think that that could do him some good. I don't yeah. I just feel like there's, there's something has to change to kind of keep both characters interesting because, like I said, we've only seen Gage versus Don, so we haven't really seen Gage do much else, and... Donst has been in the title picture for since he came back from being well, even before he got cancer, he's been in the title picture for the entire time. I agree. I also think he should just go off, heal up <laughs> any injuries I might have lingering, uh, buy some fucking boots that he doesn't have to duct tape together, and get an elbow pad that he doesn't have to duct tape together. And uh, yeah, uh, and I and I know that there's a few people that kind of work. Uh, challenging Gage on social media when he won the title. I think like Filthy kind of challenged him. I think Eric Ryan definitely did. Yeah. So yeah, let's toss this shit up and and get over it, this already. Same as Infinity and Beyond. What? Speaking of Eric Ryan, I mean we've seen to Infinity and Beyond versus the Young Studs, right? One on one. Uh, probably. I'm not sure about one on one, but we've definitely seen them against each other. I'm not 100 percent sure if it was one on one. I feel like I'll look a, it up. I feel like that's another set of names that can go in there. Yeah. Because sometimes it's definitely. just it's just looking at the card and going, okay, who is on this card? Or who's not on the card that could be in this 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 spot? I mean, granted, there's a lot of tag teams. I'm seeing how there's not really any broken tag teams on here, minus a, a couple. We could, there's, I mean, like, like I've even heard the fuck it. Like, we'll give the fuck it's another shot. Um, so many different possibilities. I don't know. I feel like, with especially with having an open challenge such as this, every time you turn around or every time you, you get a moment to think about something else, all of a sudden another name pops in your head. And you go, oh, what about this? Because, like, like I was saying, after I recorded last week with Caden, we were just bullshit. And I'm like, what about... Sex bombs, uh, besties in the world. Like, what about that? The yeah, the last time we saw that match, and the only time we saw that match was uh, for the title at uh, night two of Jaylit. So the Young Studs versus Infinity and Beyond, and Infinity and Beyond went over, obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what the night. That, isn't that the night they reunited? I do. The Young Studs. No, because they were they they were a tag team again. Oh, they I were a tag team for for a while for House of the Rising Sun and the next episode. So that's right. Bobby came back at Gauntlet and then they 
Right. Yeah. Started tag team again. As also, of Tequila Jacks. Yeah, as a house for the rising sun. To, to bring it back to the tag team thing too, I think that that's I say it every time that the AIW does like a mystery challenger or like some a mystery opponent or a mystery partner. Uh, AIW is really good at surprising people. Sorry if anybody heard that my dogs were going crazy upstairs. I think it was somewhat faint. I could hear something, but I I couldn't exactly tell what it was. Yeah, that's kind of the the thing that I'm looking forward to the most is to see who that that mystery tag is going to be. Hopefully it, it actually excites me a little bit. Otherwise, I think I'm looking forward to Eddie and, and Hot Sauce, and I'll actually really pay attention this time, unlike the last time. I think one of the things that I really love about AIW since becoming a fan is when we have matches like this where you don't know who is going to be the opponent, whether it's it just, oh, it's it's versus a mystery opponent, or oh, it's an open challenge. So then your your mind starts to go crazy, like, okay, who, who's going to be, who could it be, who fits in here, is it going to be like a surprise? Very rarely do I feel AIW really lets you down. I mean, there might be a couple where it's just like, maybe some of the pick your poison matches, it's like, oh, okay, that could have been better. But something like this, at a show like this, End of the year that I'm hoping it's somebody that like motor the ones some of the ones we talked about motor shooting machine guns might be my top favorite. Yep, I got another one for you. Throw one of this in there out, out of the blue, all the way from a uh, left field. Uh, Revelation thirteen. I was gonna say Revelation thirteen, <laughs> and I was gonna say maybe even Faith in Nothing. It could be anybody. Yep, I, I'll tell you this: it can't be the Cutthroat Crew. Um, unfortunately, they cannot win their. They cannot tie Infinity and Beyond for three-time tag champions because uh, Morty Rackham, a.k.a. Uh, uh, Rex, Rex Brody, is out with a, a big shoulder injury or something like that. Isn't he in Florida, too? And he, might, he might have already went back, yeah. Ooh, Revelation 13 at one point. Another version of it was Thorn and Matt Thorn Justice. Thorn and Matt Justice, yeah. For the titles, too. So I, I was that. looking at that, too, Ed. Yeah. Thorn and Matt Justice, maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's who answers the call or, of... Or you can have Indian. the longest reigning uh, tag champs, which, weirdly enough, is Alpha Beta Duke. Ooh, we can get Super Oprah and the Duke. Or maybe it'll be the Potato and the Duke. No, this was so Nick Belushi at Super Oprah and Duke. Ooh, so many options. The Savage. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, what if somehow we get a uh, Bash the Beach turn and we get the Olsen twins? I'd be excited about that. Of course Jimmy you would. If came back and, and reformed the Olsen twins with Talon, I'd be, I'd be all about that life. Or we can go back to the original champs of uh, Q&A. Very unlikely. And there we have pretty much gone through through everybody that's uh, that's possible <laughs> of former champions. Dead air, 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 dead air. When I take out the silences, that don't get picked up. It just sounds like you started talking and then went dead air, dead air, dead air, dead air. <laughs> I was just typing up something really quick. And... Now you gotta timestamp that shit. <laughs> Oh no, I'm keep, it's, I keep I keep most of the shit in there. I give a damn. Yeah. Oh man. You obviously didn't go, go to Cleveland school for broadcasting. No, I did, <laughs> I did not. That's, Come that's on, that's cool. I just I just gave you that's that cool softball. Really, that school really turns out the uh, the elite of the elite. <laughs> the, the ironic. The elite. The, the elite. <laughs> uh, the ironic thing about all that is. I almost went to that school. Of course it, you did. It was in between that and truck driving school. Mm. But I decided... What if to... you picked the, the good idea? I wonder if you picked the, the right one. Well, seeing as how most of the people I know who went never really graduated and went... Well, I mean, they graduated, but they, they didn't really go into radio. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good on that. Seems how... Most like... of them don't do anything that's even broadcasting related. Yeah. I mean, we have, what, two AW fans who went, and last I knew, one was an exterminator, and the other one... We have... I'm, I'm not even sure we have, what he does. Who's the exterminator? Hi, Clack. Oh, I don't know. He went there, too. Doan went there, and so did Matt Luhenick. Oh, Matt. Oh, yeah, Matt did go. Yeah. And Doan is now fucking... Doan does camera work, so, I mean, I guess that's kind of, like, something from it. Yeah, but it's not, like, it's not a 9 to 5. I didn't. I didn't know where he worked until right before the last show. I walked into Target, and there he was. Yeah, his 
his uh, camera work is is just as good as Michael J. Fox's would be. On a side note, I'm going to shaky what... Justin Summers and shaky. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Trust me, I know who Michael J. Fox is. I was just more. I don't know whether I should bring this up or not, but fucking Don has a podcast now. Yeah, I was mentioned in episode one. Yeah, that that blows my mind. Uh, and you have to like I think you do you have to give money through Patreon because that's the link that I seen. I'm like, I'm not kidding. No, you don't have to give money to listen to it. Uh to be honest, it's a bit of a tough listen. No shit. I I can I can o- only imagine. But then again, oh, I would say I, w- one. I would say it's a free like promotion for him, me mentioning it on the show, but you have to you have to be an AIW fan who goes to a lot of shows to probably get into it, because it sounds like it was him, and I know Hackle was on it, and I don't know if Porter No, was he on mentions it. Hackle. Hackle's supposed to be on it. That's, I got mentioned during the Hackle thing, but, oh. uh, I mean, it's... It, it's it, it's all him doing a lot of just inside jokes with himself. Like, he called his grandma, and he was talking to his grandma, and he called, like, his friend, and he was talking to his friend. I mean, it literally... It's just in do humor, where it's kind of non-sequitur... And it's just funny because he's putting people in awkward positions, but it's like the awkwardness isn't there if you don't know who he is or who the people he is talking to are. Yeah. Hard pass. <laughs> that was kind of my, that was kind of my thought. Hard pass. Hard pass. Actually, my exact reaction was nope. Yep. Yep. Um, I le- I listened to two minutes of it, and I looked at my wife and said, "There's no way I'm getting through this half hour." And I just turned it off, and then he mentioned that I was. I was in it, like he said, I mentioned you in it, kind of in passing, and I was like, oh. So I uh, skipped around until I kind of heard something that was relatively about me-ish, and I figured out where it was and what it was. The question is, is it better or worse than Like Water? Uh, Like Water was a very short-lived thing so far, and I can tell you that uh, the episodes of... The episodes of Like Water that I did do were very informative and interesting. Yeah, I actually listened to the Like Waters. The only my only issue with Like Water is you needed to edit them. And it's not necessarily like you kept things in or something. It was just more volume. Like it was really quiet. Yeah, it was. It was me. I was still trying to learn to use the equipment and stuff, and yeah, I yeah. still, I still haven't completely put it out. It's just been a really crazy thing. Actually, I'm looking at the equipment right now, sitting in front of me, and Left it's up. sitting there, ready to be used. I just kind of gotta, I gotta really sit down one day and fiddle with it to try to figure out different things well, and it, do, it doesn't read help. some manuals. It doesn't help when you're using an, like an iPad with it. If you, I think if you used an actual laptop or computer you'd probably get a little bit better results on it that's that's what i'm gonna play that's what i'm gonna try to do here in the future i mean you are the future i mean i'm staring at two laptops right now i'm not gonna sell one but i'm just saying staring at one mac mini i uh we have one computer in the house and it's a desktop well actually technically we have two but one's my wife's work computer nobody cares about our computers guys why are we talking about this I don't know. I think you well, should cut out like the last like ten minutes. <laughs> I think you should keep in the last ten minutes. Yeah, just I, to I, force I, people to sit there I, and listen I, to it. I keep it all the shit. People love freaking tape as far that's far as what I build. No one says, "Listen, I love the show, but you guys need to shut the fuck up and talk about wrestling and talk about this." A lot of times, it's like, "Oh, I <laughs> if love." If Ed listened to it, he would tell you that. Like probably. I don't know. I, but I'm an asshole. I feel like a lot of the people we have it. on, like everybody has their own tangents. Like eventually, I want to do a double Ed episode, and. Freaking Ed from Bob yep. Van Dam is going to go on tangents. That's what he likes doing. That's why I love him on the show. <laughs> I'd like to know how fucking our other Ed here is going to take it. Yep. Um, before we get into the rest of the card, uh, I like to throw out other plugs that I used to do at the beginning, but if now I like to do them at the end or in the middle. Just spread stuff out. But we have all the other shows you can listen to right here on the Trending Topics Network, such as, or if you're listening on the Trending Topics Network, All Beer Inside, Tut's Experience, What's on Fight, Eurovision Showcase, Legends on Siren Radio, Old School at the Movies, and View from the Fourth Row. A lot of shows have just stopped lately. But there's also podcast friends such as Macho Man Radio, Chris Clem's Cavs Cast, Wingcast, a wingman podcast with Steve Guy, 
Let the Hate Flow Through You with Jeremy Shear and El Hordano Diablo, Pod Van Dam, The Road Home from Wrestling. Check out the official graphic designer of Wrestling Cheers, Moy Boy Designs, Thrift Store Jobber on eBay, Instagram, Etsy, and Twitter. Check out our friends at Rebel Life Media and NEO Sports Insiders.com. Getting into the rest of the card, we will start with the intense title match Joey Janela versus Jimmy Jacobs. That, 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 that's what I'm talking about. My return to AIW, and uh, despite your best efforts, Colt Cabana, nothing funny about it. You want to make a joke about everything, but this, this is serious business for you. You want to know why it's serious, man? Not too long ago, I had a, I had a nice job. I wore a suit and tie. I had benefits. 401k. And I left that job and, well, yeah, I'm sure there was a selfie involved. Maybe the narrative is that I got fired for that. But the truth is, I left that place because I hated that job. I hated the fact that that job didn't allow me to hit somebody in the face. That job didn't allow me to get hit in the face, man. A writer for two and a half years, a writer who ever said the pen is mightier than the sword will they've never had the pleasure of driving an eight inch railroad spike into somebody's face, man. And maybe that's a little intense, but that's how I like it. And that's how I want it. On December 29th, man. Somebody takes the, the craziness of it all as uh, seriously as I do, man. The guy who's uh, falling off roofs and through light tubes and through fire and through it all, through it all, he's the intense champion. And uh, George Nell, I want you. December 29th. I want you to bring all that, man. No jokes about it. I don't want a funny guy. I want the real deal. And I want the intense championship. And Joe Janelle, just remember who I am. I'm a princess. I always get what I want. Jimmy, his second match in AIW since getting tossed from a- uh, WWE. I'm going to, I could see Jacobs winning, but I'm going to go Janela. I am also going to go Janela. I'd like Jacobs to win. I don't know. Eh? I don't know financially who, which one's easier. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to see <laughs> financially which one's easier. <laughs> this fucking guy. Yeah, that's why. Well, that's this how you get to guy. think of some shit sometimes. I mean, look, I would love for Jacobs to win, but I just feel like Janela hasn't even has he defended his title since he won it. Oh, look, let me look it up right now. I don't think he has. Uh, he wanted an absolution, and then just he, off, off the top of my head, Glacier. Oh yeah, that's right, Glacier. He, he defended it against Glacier, and then I think he went to England for a while. Mm-hmm. I don't think he, there was any other shows. He went in eight to England uh, in early November, and so he's been gone since then. I'm looking at yeah W. Uh, he, did, he beat Sanjay at Cold as Ice, so he defended it there. Glacier, and I think Glacier oh, was the right. first defense. Yeah, I forgot Glacier about Cold as Ice. Ice. So yeah, he defended it twice. Um, yeah, I, I'm picking Janela. I, like I said, I'd like uh, Jacobs to win, but I'm picking Janela. Oh. Four-way match, M-Dog Matt Cross versus Gringo Loco versus Candice LeRae versus Laredo Kid. Uh, it can go any way here, but you know what? I'm going to go Laredo. Dustin. I'm going to go Candace. I feel like uh, we don't see her very often, and I feel like she could use a good win. And I'm going with the same idea of the good win, but I'm going to go with Gringo. Eddie Kingston versus Hot Sauce Tracy Williams, a rematch. Uh, I forget who won the first one. Was it Tracy? Yeah, because it wasn't in J- was it in Jaylet. I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then Tracy went on to the to fu- the quarterfinal or whatever second to the last. He went on to the finals. Okay, it was finals. Yeah, because then he won it. Right. Yeah, and 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 didn't and nothing happened from that because it was make Ed mad. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go Eddie. Uh, I'm gonna say. Mm, double disqualification. 
I could see that. I could definitely see that. Actually, I called for that to be. I, I wanted that to be a finish. Um, in Menor, uh, with the Josh Bishop, uh, and uh, was it Kurt Salian? Was that the match, Justin? What was that? And right. One more time. Bishop versus Stallion and Mentor. Yeah. Yeah. So that I wanted that to be like a, a, a time. I wanted it to be a time limit draw just because they were so intense uh, during like a good way through the match. And they were like just beating the shit out of each other and kind of doing that, that Don Fry Takayama spot. And I just thought it would have been cool just to to give your like a what was a Rocky two or three finish or whatever mm-hmm. just the the nobody wins and and then you could uh rematch it back in mind the next time uh i thought that that would have been perfect for there but but yeah i think that this and this has this is kind of going to be the same type of match i think it's going to be a slugfest while also being technical at times uh so um because i also don't there's no way to no reason to put for either of them to specifically win because I don't think either of them are on their way to a, uh, a singles title match at all. So it's 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 just a win. It's a win just to see the match and not it doesn't matter the outcome. I don't think. Before we get into the next match, let's go to a promo from All Ego Ethan Page. <sighs> when it comes to AIW. Ethan Page doesn't really ask for much. Now, since we're in the Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa holiday season, I've decided that it might be okay for me to ask for a little favor. You know, for months, actually I should say years, I've kind of just been going with the flow at AIW, and to be honest with you, it's been really fun. It's been fun because I've gotten to see a lot of students leave their academy and and grow up to be stars in Cleveland, Ohio. Then travel out and become stars in new territories, towns, and promotions. And I've been a part of this company for, I think, over five years. That's pretty much half of my career. AIW's done a lot for me. But now I need AIW to do one more thing for Ethan Page. This whole year has been shit. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, I've had a couple laughs. Yeah, you know what? I've gotten to just relax and not really stress myself out. I would take my drive to Cleveland, Ohio. I'd meet the fans. I'd sell my merch. I'd shake hands and I'd leave. But I wouldn't ever leave with a big victory, a championship, or a moment that will last a lifetime. No, what I leave with is an envelope full of money and regret. Regret for not putting 110%. Regret for not pushing myself to become a four-time absolute champion. Regret, regret, regret is losing to Dominic Guarini at the last AIW event. That's what I regret. I regret not being the best version of me. So my favor, my favor, the last, the last show in 2017, I want Dominic Garini one more time. And I want Dominic Garini to know that if this gets approved, if you accept, if whatever, this won't be the same as our last encounter. I'm not going to go to jujitsu classes and learn how to reverse your armbar. No, I'm going to walk right up to you and look you in the eye and tell you, you are dealing with a different human being, a more motivated Ethan Page. So please, AIW, give me my Christmas wish. I don't want two front teeth. I got those. I want Dominic Garini. And I want him on December 29th. So all ego Ethan Page versus Dominic Garini, another rematch, one of the best matches from Hell on Earth. Um I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Dom. Dustin. Uh Page won the last match, right? Dom. Uh, Dom won the last match? Mm-hmm. I'm saying Dom's winning hmm. both. Oh, that's right, Dom won the last match. And then did the post game prayer. Yes. Yep. Uh, I'd like to point out while we were talking about the CYO post game prayer, I am a, I am the uh, year two thousand JV uh, city CYO champion. I have the medal and the trophy sitting right next to me at this moment. 
Uh, so I feel like I'm the real winner. <laughs> uh, for you didn't say for what sport? For football. For football. Okay. I was the well, then you are not. CYO you are part City of champ the, of football. Yeah, you are uh, part of. You didn't. You didn't win at all. You're not. I'm still a champion. I'm still a champion. Um, Co champion. I'm a champion, and <laughs> I, as champion, will uh, pick Dom. I'm going to pick Dom to win the rematch as well. Uh, and it's a clean sweep of Dom from here. And speaking of promos, how about another one? And this time from Filthy Tom Lawler. I've been here at AIW for about half a year. And the entire time I've been here, I don't know what the fans want to see. Do they want to see me go out there and beat the crap out of somebody, do, use a professional wrestling? Do they want to see me choke somebody out using MMA moves? I don't know what the fans want. Half the time they boo me, half the time they cheer me. What I do know is that since I've been here, there's been one man going around saying that he's the captain of the ship. He's the captain of the high seas here on AIW. And guess what? I would like to say that, hmm, I was gonna say I'm the captain of the ship, but let's be real. I'm more like the Poseidon of the seas when it comes to uh, Louis Linden's captain. I'm more like Moby Dick to Louis Linden's Captain Ahab. And let me tell you, Louis Linden, I want you December 29th here in AIW. We know the fans are gonna be on your side. We know you're gonna go out there and give it your best. And we also know that when it comes down to it and that boats are rocking and the heavy seas are sailing high, that there, there's gonna be one man standing at the top of the mast. And that's Filthy Tom Lawler. So, Filthy Tom Lawler versus the captain of the ship, Lewis Linden, two of the hottest names, or maybe two, two, two of the guys that had the best 2017 in AIW. I'm going to go Lewis Linden going 2-0 and against the, quote, MMA guy. Dustin? Uh, I am going to say that... Filthy Tom continues his climb and beats the captain of the ship. I am also going with Filthy Tom and hoping that he wins because I don't care much about Lewis Linden. <laughs> oh, uh, and I also another think shocker. Tom's had a better... What's that? Another shocker. Yeah, yeah. Just over it. Uh, and then we have the production versus no consequences for for a while i said i won't go against you know joshua bishop and then of course their director has been on the show before so now i'm I'm split between two guests well i've said it once and i'll say it again i have a comedy tragedy tattoo on my arm i'm going with the production what 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 oh you okay you want to go ahead uh, i'm also going with production <laughs> Uh, I'm going to clean sweep it. And, you know, I don't have a tattoo of comedy and tragedy, (laughs) but I will pick the production anyways. Do you have a tattoo? I have two tattoos. Okay. I lied. I have three tattoos. (laughs) How do you, how do you lose count? I have three. (laughs) I I have so many. It's hard to remember. I I have, I have my one X, X, X motherfucker. I have I have a teddy bear tattoo, a Psyduck tattoo, and a penguin tattoo. I had no idea you were such a Vin Diesel fan, Ed. I've got that before, you sack of shit. <laughs> hey, ask any racer whether you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. <laughs> you guys, you guys are missing the obvious. Porn. It's Ed lives his life like... a quarter mile at a time. No, and it's that it just like porn a lot. <laughs> Then I figure your hands would be hairy. Nope. Why? <laughs> That's why I'm losing my... It's the other one. It's I'm losing my vision. <laughs> oh, why? Is someone take the Infinity Stone out of your head? Uh, not that tuned into it. I would know more about that once it comes. Once the movie comes. Because that's... I'm a uh, poser comic book fan. So am I. If that, that's what I want to call it, then there's a comic book fan. It's just more or less, I hear about the movies coming out, and I kind of do research on what the characters are like, and I go, oh, okay. More than I. Uh, how about the AIW Tag Team Open Challenge to Infinity and Beyond versus Mystery Opponent? I mean, 
we won't say who we think is going to it's going to be just whether you think infinity beyond is going to win or whether the mystery opponents whoever that may be will win i'm going to go with a shocker and into infinity beyond retains the titles how is that a shocker? A shocker because, well, when we see matches like this, it was kind of like what we were talking about earlier, we're, we're expecting them to lose. So I'm expecting, no matter what the team is, to Infinity Beyond wins. And actually, what I'd like to see, I wouldn't mind if, like, between now and freaking Jail at every show we see to Infinity and Beyond on, open challenge, open challenge, open challenge. I'd love that. Uh, from what you're saying, you're almost going with the idea that it's a an absolute, if you will, that uh, every time there's an open challenge that that person wins. And I don't think it really is. I think that the, the last time that that really happened was Ultramantis Black, where a mystery opponent came in and, and won it. I mean, in my... Besides I a mean, passion of something of sorts. I mean, am I wrong, Just, I Dustin? Mean, I don't know off the top of my head. But I mean, based that on seems... all the mystery opponent stuff, I mean, they do. I'm sure that maybe one of the pick your poison, somebody won something, or I mean, I I I can't remember off the top of my head. Ooh. I will say that the reason that it's kind of a shocker if to Infinity and Beyond were to win because odds would tell you there's so many other options in that mystery pack that it could be anybody i personally am going to go with the mystery tag team not really knowing who it is but i feel like the odds play better in that favor what do you think ed uh, i'm going with infinity thorn hates me well he books to hate me <laughs> and then we're down to the main event absolute title rematch nick gage versus tim don much like the first one, I'm going with Nick Gage, and much like the first one, I'm hoping that this will, in 2018, open up a brand new world of challengers. Is it kind of like what we were saying earlier? Dons has been tied with the title for so long. Get him away from it. Have Gage as a champion for a while, and then see what kind of matches and opponents that brings. So, going with Nick Gage, Dustin. I 100% agree with your sentiment. I'm going Nick Gage, and I'm saying let's do something new in 2018. And uh, I back exactly what, what Dustin just said. So that's all three of us. All right, let's let's uh, let's wrap this show up. Any final thoughts or last-minute words from Dustin? Uh, no, not really. Uh, it's going to be a good show. I'm excited for it. Uh, a few shows have been announced since you guys even... You guys didn't know about the Akron show that was just recently announced or uh, about the January show wasn't announced either when you guys did your show, was it? So, I mean, since you and Caden did the last podcast, two more shows have been announced for next year. It's already shaping up to be a pretty busy year, pretty crazy year. Uh, so, I mean, I'm I'm excited to see what goes on. Uh, I don't know if we're doing a year in review show or a year prediction show, but I'd like to get on that. I'd like to put my hat in the ring right now, Justin. If that is a thing that's going to happen. Ed, uh, I'm also stoked for next year uh, just to see what kind of weird shit Thorn uh, pulls off. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of other stuff. Oh, I did uh, one little thing that is different. I did go out of state for a show two weeks ago. I went to the Every Time I Die Christmas show, and they had uh, the opening of the show was actually, I think they did eight wrestling matches. And um, I think it, the company is called Empire State Wrestling ESW. And uh, they put on a good show. Uh, some of the local talent's pretty solid. But I was super stoked that I got to see Timothy Thatcher versus Josh Barnett. And they called it in the ring. And they just grappled the whole time. And it was awesome. And uh, it was really cool. And I got to talk to both of the guys afterwards. And that was pretty sweet. So I got to meet the my second uh, heavyweight UFC heavyweight champion after Stipe and uh, Barnett, the youngest heavyweight champion of the UFC. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm stoked for what's to come. Um, hopefully we get some uh, fresh faces in, in the title picture and, and winning the titles in the new year. Did and, you not uh, meet Severn? Oh, good one. Well, was Severn, he heavy? There you go. Uh, he was the UFC champion. He, what? Champion, I mean, yes. back then... Back then, it was only one weight class, so yes, he was the heavyweight champion. I mean, he weighed a heavyweight weight, so yeah, I would say he's a two-time well, heavyweight champion. Well, then you can put in 
that I've met at least four champ UFC champions because of Ronda. Well, if we're saying heavyweight champions, I well, would say I'm no. Saying, I'm saying champion then. But well, yeah, then, yeah uh, you've met four four UFC champions. I was also bummed because I got there a little bit late because we were going to fucking Buffalo, and uh, I guess Pennsylvania doesn't like to do this thing called plowing because uh, they're ass backwards as a state as a whole, and I'm not a, a Pittsburgh hater like most of Cleveland. Uh, but yeah, fucking plow your goddamn roads, you sacks of shit, especially if I'm paying for tolls and shit. Fuck off. Uh, I miss Brody King, a fellow uh, straight edge hardcore dude, and I wanted to see him for the first time ever and totally missed him. So fuck you, Pennsylvania uh, Department of Transportation. Um, but um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I might be a Pittsburgh hater, but being a truck driver is what makes me hate the state of Pennsylvania for many reasons. And there's only been a few times I've ever had to like go on back roads, not necessarily to avoid anything. It was just more or less, oh, I have to go pick up a load here, and it's way off the highway. Holy fuck, how do you people live here? And that wasn't even when it was snowing. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to know what it's like with, uh, with snow. Still, I well, that- hate that state. And the uh, the city planner, whoever did the city planning of Pittsburgh, can fucking rot in their fucking grave too. And I want to piss on it because it's the drizzling shits. Also, yeah. Hey, let's just build everything here, and then all this fuckery. Fuck you guys. Fuck you, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, I got I got plugs, but that's about it. Yeah. Throw throw plugs. Okay. Uh, follow yeah, me on Twitter. Uh, my personal account is Ed Battis. That is B A T T E S. No double D because I was born in the 80s on the Ed uh, at, at set tab photo for photos on my Twitter and on Instagram. I put up concert and uh, wiener wiener um, pictures <laughs> of, of a dog and a wiener wiener. Yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, set tab photo dot com for new photos every once in a while uh, and a back catalog of uh, photos from the near 800 concerts I've a- attended Good over morning. the last 13 years. Dustin. Yeah, Dustin, uh, get your plugs in. Oh, my plugs. Uh, at Rev Tintin on all platforms. You can find me. That's Rev, as in the good reverend. Tintin, as in uh, my name is Dustin, and the end of Dustin is Tin. So that <laughs> twice. So the good reverend Dustin. Uh, that's it. You can find me on Instagram. Don't post way too much. You can follow me on Twitter. I post funny things every once in a while. Mostly it's just me retweeting Funko Pops, trying to win things. But, uh, every once in a while I put something good out there. That's a, that's about it. No other real, real plugs. As always, you could buy me a beer if you see me. I will turn it down. You can buy me a Monster or Mountain Dew. I will not turn it down. It will be cheaper than said beer. That's not true. Beer's two bucks. If you want to buy out a beer... <laughs> Have, buy out a beer and then Ed'll give me the beer and it'll work out real well for everybody. Fuck you so much. <laughs> Fuck you so much. I'll take if a I beer. Add a beer but I want a, I want a root beer. Give me the and beer. I want it to be traditional root beer, not this ain't your whatever fucking hipster ass bullshit root beer. I enjoy give me a good a ginger ale. Give me a good ginger ale. I'll take a ginger. I got a. I like a nice ginger ale. You'll take a what? Ginger ale. A ginger ale. <laughs> not you. <laughs> That's why I said it. I mean, I have a the female form. Yes, I have a, a not your fa- uh, not your father's a not female you. form of Justin. That's weird. What? Yeah, a female form of Justin. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. I, I got a not your father's Mountain Dew in my my cooler right now. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> anyway, uh, like we mentioned, a lot of shows that we have coming up, uh, or at least AIW has coming up, such as like we've already stated, but I gotta go through it one more time. Rulers of the World, featuring Psycho Sid Vicious, this Friday, February 29th, 7.30 bell time, at Our Lady of Mount Carmel, 1355 West 70th Street, Cleveland, Ohio. Other events, just not that long after that, we have announced recently Death Row, Friday, January 19th, 2018, 7.30 bell time, also at Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Tickets now on sale. Either of you got your tickets for that yet? Nope. No, not yet. I, I, I'm not a ahead of time buyer. I'm very, very behind the times. Same. I'm not a ahead of time buyer since we don't get a discount anymore for doing so. Also, fe- Friday, February 23rd, 7.30 bell time at Mount Karma, we have We've Got 
A Dilemma featuring Tennille Dashwood, formerly known as Emma in WWE. That one I got my tickets for already because I know freaking people. Pervert. Yep, <laughs> with their cameras. And they've already <laughs> well, ran, got God their tickets as quick as possible. So I had to jump on that because I'm really particular about my front row seat. And then mm. also announced this past week on the AIW podcast, AIW debuting in a new market. It's AIW and <laughs> AIW Enter the Dragon, Saturday, March 10th, 2018, with a special meet and greet with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Uh, doors open at 6 o'clock for that meet and greet at the Tadmore Shrine, 3000 Curbs Drive. I've never, yeah, never heard of that necessarily before. In Akron, Ohio, 44319 uh, tickets also now on sale for that and that is a nice transition for a little something this is it's great to have this episode this is episode 31 of wrestling cheers now wrestling cheers has had more episodes than the ohio indie report in its short amount of time all within its first calendar year and there's still more to come in 2018 this is also the last episode that i will be doing at my particular address after this episode gets posted i'm probably going to be let's say not right after but shortly after i will be tearing down my setup and moving this coming weekend so when this show happens i'm going to be closer because i will i'm moving to the akron area when me and kaiga falls so i think i i looked it up and i'm going to be about 20 minutes away from the show that is the closest to an aiw show i have ever been and i am extremely extremely excited for it going to back to what you were saying earlier dustin i am planning a year in review show i was planning it for next week but right after moving i think i'm going to put out the joshua singh interview first and then we might do an episode i gotta go over my calendar once again but i do want to do a year end review and predictions episode and whoever wants to come on that is is more than welcome mostly past guests but uh, see see who all we can get on the on the the round table because it's just gonna be fun a lot of bullshitting and it's gonna cl- giant clusterfuck it's going to be but uh, that's why i gotta make sure we don't i don't have many things prepared so it's like okay we have like five awards and a couple of predictions if a lot of people are on it won't be a big deal so it'd be it'd be fun if you invite us all over to your new place we all do it in person Drink a couple beers, do a real wrestling cheers, have a good, have a little bar going. What do you think? I think it sounds like a party. Yeah, I don't really have the setup for that right now. All right, I guess it's not happening. I was really hoping we could all party. Uh, I'm all about partying. Yeah, let's party AK, AK Rowdy sell all the blow. All the blow. All the blow. Can get. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to go do a bunch of cocaine in Justin Summers' house. Yep. That's where all the cocaine's at. Justin Summers got all the cocaine. Uh, no. Yep. No. <laughs> I hear there's a plethora of horrible strip clubs in Akron that are like underneath houses and, and basements and shit. I'm sure we can find enough blow and uh, crank around there. What? I was going to say, yeah, there's not too much. Actually, was it right? Kind of right down the road from me. I know there's a stretch of bad ones. Yep. Yeah, I think actually I do think so. Um, yep. Uh, anyway, you can uh, also contact info. You can follow me on at heavyset three three zero on Twitter and Instagram. Also, much like the show, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All wrestling cheers. Facebook dot com slash wrestling cheers. Twitter dot com slash wrestling cheers. Instagram dot com slash wrestling cheers. Wrestling cheers at gmail dot com is the email. And please once again rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, and Podbean. Wrestling cheers dot podbean dot com. That will do it for us here on. Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, even if you're straight edge and you you don't drink. Later. Making your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. What you want, you got a Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name And they're all these like you can You're the way you can see Rules are all the same You're the way you can see